Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the Newark and Sherwood series, a district of 84 civil parishes right in the centre of Nottinghamshire. Come with me as we delve into one of them. Okay, today in Newark and Sherwood, I've got a village that's associated with the plague. And it's a nice little place, this. I've just walked around. This is my start and my end point for the main walk. It's called the Daffodil Tea Room. Looks rather nice. Fresh coffee served here. Don't like coffee myself, I'm more of a tea kind of person. I'm sure they do that as well. You'll find that in Ekring. This Newark and Sherwood video is sponsored by Past Days, a family history blog by June Terrington. You'll find a link in the description. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Ekring is a village and civil parish in the Newark and Sherwood district of Nottinghamshire, noted for a few things, including both the plague and oil production. The village lies between the A616 and the A617 roads between Ollerton and Southall. Historically, it's associated with the Savile family, most notably Sir George Savile of Rufford Abbey. Rufford Abbey has a connection to Ekring. One of the early owners of the village was Gilbert de Gant, who in 1148, founded Rufford Abbey and endowed it with its property in this village. In 1853, White's Directory of Nottinghamshire described Ekring as an extensive village, situated on a gentle acclivity comprising some 710 inhabitants and 2,397 acres of land. There was a small school here at that time too, and the local school board built another school in 1877 for the children of both Rufford and Ekring. That's this building. Not a lot has changed really since then. The school is no longer active and the population has decreased a little bit, but Ekring is still quite extensive and fairly spread out. Next, we move away from Main Street briefly in order to catch the church. So we need this handy little footpath, which will take us from Main Street up to Church Lane. The name Ekring has developed over time. It was written in the Doomsday Book as Eschering, and it derives from the Danish word for oak trees, Eik. It literally means a circle of oak trees. Nothing of historic importance has transpired at Ekring. Well, at least not until wartime, but we'll get to that. That said, in the church here lies a man who is considered something of a hero. The parish church is dedicated to St Andrew the Apostle. This is a grade two listed building and it was constructed in the 13th to 15th centuries. It was restored in the early 1880s when the seating was replaced. It contains a font bearing the date 1674 and a plaque commemorating the installation of the tower clock in 1887. Interestingly, it's raised above the level of the road, sited as it is on a small eminence. I wonder why that could have been. information board here outside the church there's some good stuff on this including a little bit about William Mompesson he's got a link to the parish of Eam in Derbyshire and people in Ekring know him because apparently he carried the plague and he was banned from the church meaning he had to preach outside 
Mompesson was the vicar of Eme during the plague in 1666. He moved to the village in 1670 and he lived here for 39 years. He was then buried in the churchyard. The village hall is known as Ekring Cater Hall, an unusual name. This is where the parish council meets and it's available for hire too. On the wall outside there's a parish notice board. There's a few events advertised on here. It seems Ekring does well for itself as a community. Oh and I almost forgot, on the edge of the churchyard is the village war memorial. This lists 12 names for World War I and Ekring suffered no losses in World War II. Chapels wise, the Wesleyan Methodists had a chapel built here in 1835, as did the Primitive Methodists in 1837. I believe one of them to be this building on the hill. The village phone box here houses a defib machine. Google even marks this one on the map. There aren't many book exchanges in this part of Nottinghamshire, I'm afraid, guys. Now, a little later, after the main walk around, we'll be heading for that place which is marked National Grid. There's something to the south of the village, which is quite interesting if you're into electrical stuff, shall we say. Our walk now takes a very rural turn away from civilization for a short time as we venture northeast to pick up a footpath via these S-bends on Newark Road. Ekring has many footpaths in and around it. One of them that passes through the village is the Robin Hood Way, the 168 km long distance footpath we've walked on before. Of course, this is Newark and Sherwood, so naturally this area is blanketed with trees. This particular clump is located off Newark Road, running parallel with Kirklington Road. Over this field you can see some large structures. Those are pylons at the National Grid Training Facility, which opened in 2012, giving apprentices specialist training in substation technology. The footpath does continue south towards the training centre, but we're heading back into the village down a second footpath, which follows these steps. It crosses a small bridge over a beck before taking us back into civilization. I thought it would be a good time now to mention just how useful all these footpaths are. It's quite handy having little footpaths like that around to make a circular walk. You'd be surprised how many public footpaths and rights of way there are in this country. I use a website called Footpath Map and it shows you every public footpath, every public bridleway, every, every byway, every restricted byway, everything that you can legally walk on. And it's really helpful because it makes my job so much easier. Anyway, that little trek through those woods has brought us here. To this playground and I'm about to go down Triumph Road. That playground is Ekring playing field on the end of Triumph Road. As far as I can tell the village doesn't have any sports teams so this is as good as you're going to get here. This next area is residential. Triumph Road and Triumph Close will join us to Kirklington Road in a few moments again where we'll talk buses. Let's talk notable people first though. As well as Mompesson, John Michael, a cleric and natural philosopher in the 1700s, was born in Ekring. He made notable discoveries in astronomy, geology, optics and gravitation. More recently, you might have been familiar with Helen Cresswell. Cresswell was a writer for children, best known for comedy and supernatural fiction. Her most popular book series, Lizzie Dripping and the Bagthorpe Saga, were also the basis for television series. Now we're on Kirklington Road and we have a bus in front of us. From Ekring, you can catch three different buses which run to Mansfield and Newark. So that bus is the 28B and it runs to Mansfield via two places which I saw on its little screen which I know full well people around here say differently to how I would but I am clued up and I know how they're pronounced that's Blidith and Raineth. This part of the walk takes us through some of the back streets if you like ones which are narrow and very much lacking in the footpath department. There's not a lot to tell you about these streets so instead I'll talk about Ekring's commemorative trees there are two. One was planted in 1897 and the other in 2012. They both celebrate jubilees. One's for Queen Victoria and the other is for our current Queen Elizabeth. Speaking of memorials, there's also one for Mompesson, named the Mompesson Cross. 
Here's a regular sight in Sherwood Forest. Much like the one in nearby Walesby, at Riles Farm is an archery shop, custom-built archery, which has been going since 1999. Having reached the end of Church Lane, we're back to Main Street. In shot here is the village pub, the Savile Arms on Billsthorpe Road, an early 17th century brick building. And we're back where we began at the Daffodil. This is based as a former coach house at Savile Court, and it describes itself as a contemporary bistro tea room. Okay, so we're all the way around Ekring, around my main route, but we're not finished, not by a long shot. There are two things more I need to show you, and they're both to the south of the village. One of them is to do with the national grid. The other one is to do with some oil wells. So it's the oil well related thing first. I was kind of hoping I could drive to this, but as you can see, this gate is locked, so I can't. I've got to walk it. Luckily, it's not that far down this uh, bridle way. We're in Duke's Wood and we're heading for what used to be an oil well museum. It's no longer there because it's now in Kellum, but some remnants of the oil wells, the nodding donkeys, can still be seen. Duke's Wood is a local nature reserve which is heavily associated with oil wells. In the late 1930s, oil exploration was undertaken by the Darcy Exploration Co Limited, part of the Anglo-Iranian Oil Company. They found significant quantities of oil in the area, in what would become known as the Ekring Oil Field, of which Duke's Wood was only a small part. It was a useful resource during World War II. In March 1943, production began at around 100 wells, coordinated by Philip Southall, a petroleum engineer from the company, which, fun fact, would eventually become BP. During the war, the oil field produced in excess of two and a quarter million barrels of oil from some 170 nodding donkeys. The location of the wells was kept secret throughout the operation. Production continued until 1964. By that time, the wells were producing 47 million barrels. These days, the oil wells have gone, but there are still some memorials in this wood. The museum, which used to be here, has now moved to Kellum. The oil field had some American oil workers who lived at the Anglican Theological College at Kellum Hall. OK, one thing left, and it is the National Grid Training Centre. But before I go there, you guys need a picture bit. There's a few bits and bobs in the main village that I didn't cover, including the windmill. So I'm hoping to find a picture of that and put it in this next section. Here comes today's picture bit. A steep hill on a somewhat bumpy road descends into the village from the south, and this passes a large residential training centre for the National Grid. For my overseas followers, the National Grid is the high voltage electric power transmission network serving Great Britain, connecting power stations and major substations together. It should be noted that it does not cover Northern Ireland, which is part of a single electricity market with the Republic of Ireland, but it does include the Isle of Man. And ladies and gentlemen, that has been Ekring, another one down in Newark and Sherwood. It's been an interesting one, this. There's, there's more to it than meets the eye. If you look at the map and you look at just Ekring Village, you think to yourself, well, that's not very big. There's not really much to talk about. But then when you sort of look around the parish boundaries, you think to yourself, hang on a second, this one's actually got quite a lot, and a lot that's very interesting. How many times have we seen somewhere that's got something to do with ancient history, as in the plague, and then something as modern as this? It doesn't happen very often. And uh, yeah, Ekring's certainly got it all. It's time for me to move on to my next one here in Newark and Sherwood. I've been Andy, also known as the Village Idiot, and I'm out.